Hello and welcome to the Toyota Solutions studio. Joining me now is Yoki Matsuoka. She's a tech leader, a roboticist, and she's held prominent positions in technology, including uh, as a VP of technology at Nest and the head of innovation at Google X. Yoki, thanks so much for being with us. Oh yeah, thanks for letting me be here. What drew you to technology and healthcare initially? Technology was through robotics. I was uh, uh, trying to become a professional tennis player, and when that didn't work out, I sought for something comfortable in physics and math space that I liked, and I found robotics to be a place where I could potentially build a robotic body for myself. <laughs> <laughs> you were looking for a, a tennis buddy? Yeah, I Somebody was. you could play with. <laughs> exactly, anytime I wanted. And you're credited with sort of having um, a lot of uh, developing the modern robotic hand. Tell us about this sort of like intersection of people and machines. Mm -hmm. I think I've, even though I approached it from a robotic angle, I've always been interested in the human aspect, what makes human human, from the biological aspect, neurological aspect, and the interaction aspect as well with technology. So as I dove into building prosthetic devices that could be controlled by the brain signals, that was the entry into the robotics in general. Mm. Um, I ended up going deeper and deeper and trying to build more realistic human hands because it was so deep. It was so much to understand in human hands that we just didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the panel discussion that you were just participating in was called the Fourth Revolution, and and, and you kind of covered the topics of you know using technology to solve some of the world's pressing problems. Can you give us? That, that, that sounds like a lofty goal when, <laughs> when you hear about it, right? To, to somebody who doesn't know much about the subject, but can you give us an example of, of how we can use technology to help solve you know, issues, especially ones that are, that are very relevant for women? You know, I think because of my recent history, home and health are places, and also it's very intimate to women because we you know, care about the home and everything, yeah. but you know, the, the way to look at it is that we are making great advances in technology from you know sensors, power management, big data, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and then things are becoming more and more accessible because of the phone technology that we carry around, and those things also push the technology to get cheaper and better. So through all those things that's been pushing, now we have new opportunities to help the fields that has never been helped by that level of technology. So you know, home when I was at Nest, having house temperature be controlled by something smart was something nobody has thought about but clever people got together formed the company and now you know when people are there the house knows what the comfortable temperature is and when you're not there we know how to save energy and same thing over time love to see something like that happen in healthcare um, as I said in a panel it would be great that we can start to turn around where the incentives are given mm -hmm. because sensors that we wear or carry around or in the environment allows us to know when we might be heading to the wrong direction in our health and then what to do to turn us around. I've, I've covered robotics conferences in the past uh, and I know that there are typically very few women present. That's true. Um, do you see that that has changed? I mean, there's been so much attention drawn to the fact that we need to encourage young girls to be interested in STEM subjects and, and I, I, I see that there's been a lot of focus there, but do you see that things are changing in the industry a little bit? You know, that I have to say that change is too slow. Yeah. It's changing, maybe. Is it noticeable? Mm, barely. Yeah. Can it change much faster? Absolutely. What, what do but you think would be a more effective way to make the change happen faster? Because we're all impatient, right? Yeah, we are all I mean, impatient. And I think it's hard. We're trying to put you know, role models out there so people see that it's possible. But that's just a small bit of it. I think we have to change policies. We have to make sure that when we struggle with things, we say, aha, uh -huh, everybody, all the other women will struggle with this. For example, mm -hmm. I have four kids, and then raising them while I do, you know, things like this, I'm here talking, yeah. is really hard. It's very difficult. Right? I have three children, yeah, so I know so what you're you talking about. Yeah, so you can totally about. relate. So what do we do? I actually brought all my children to New York. Um, but did. Yeah, but it costs money. Of course. Right? And then somebody has to take care of them, and then so all of that piles up. So can we change the way we handle those things? <clears throat> can we even change how childcare is done? Can we change the hours at work? I work crazy shifted hours. I usually work from maybe 
3, 4 a.m. to maybe 4 p.m. that and then but you know at four o'clock I leave I worked far you know longer than anybody else because I was working in the morning but when I leave at four o'clock everybody looks at me like oh she's leaving early can we change that perception so it is easier for women to go in and take care of their kids for example because you, you know? all know that you're gonna as soon as those kids go to bed you're on email again that's aren't right you? yeah I, I know your yeah, schedule we're, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> right so I think those accommodations understanding you know, it's one of the things, for example, yeah. as well as that, you know, and then the more women are there, the more women will feel less scared to go in it. And the policy, I totally agree with you. San Francisco just became the first city to mandate um, parental leave, pay, fully paid parental leave. And that's a start, but it's the first city in the I U.S., know, which it's is crazy. astonishing. Anyway, it's such a pleasure to talk with you, Yoki. I Thanks agree. for joining us. Oh, no, thank you. It was my pleasure.